there's no pluralism. But uh, the Jewish civilization, Jewish culture, is based on constant controversy. So there are different views. Each one, of course, uh, thinking that it is the only correct one. So that you have a peculiar situation where there's no pluralism in theory or in any kind of a concept. But yes, there's pluralism in the sense that there are constantly, not only different opinions, but widely uh, different and controversial. You start with the uh, uh, kingdoms. There were two Jewish kingdoms, Judah and Israel, that fought against each other and made alliances with each other and so on. There were two cent religious centers, monotheistic centers, one in Jerusalem, one in Shiloh. There was afterwards a uh, great difference between the uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees, Proshim and Zdukim. Uh, not only difference, there was a fight, there was a, a uh, confrontation. Uh, you had the Hasmoneans and the pro-Greeks you had in the Talmud, the whole Talmud is based on controversy. And the question is always, why did the Jewish civilization not just make laws? No, there was a conclusion that became law, but there was always another opinion that was quoted. And the uh, theory is that possibly people wanted to have a different opinion in case the situation changed and what was decided upon as a law could no longer be activated or was no longer relevant. And then you have constant differences. The great Maimonides, Rambam, was a very controversial figure. His books were burnt by Jews in south of France after his death. Uh, there was a constant uh, quarrel between different interpretations of the Jewish religion and the Jewish culture. And this continues to the present. Ha uh, the uh, the uh, Hasidim, the uh, uh, more mystical section of ultra-Orthodox Jewry, and the more law-bound Orthodox uh, version, and not only fought against each other in Eastern Europe, but actually had physical fights and uh, accused each other in front of the Russian Tsarist police because this happened in Eastern Europe, which was under Tsarist rule. You had afterwards the vast between the ultra-Orthodox interpretation and more liberal interpretations within religious Judaism. And then non-religious Judaism comes in which is based on the same text, except that it explains them differently. And the uh, 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 differences of opinion are such that in actual fact, in uh, practically all countries where Jews lived, there never was a uh, political unity of any kind, uh, except when it was imposed by the uh, non-Jewish power. In Poland, for instance, the Committee for Fear of, of the Four Lands, which was founded in the 16th century, was founded by the Polish king, not by the Jews. And then it split, of course, because Jews could never agree with each other. And you had the uh, establishment in Britain, in England, of the Board of Deputies of British Jews in the 18th century, which was actually an attempt to compromise between the uh, Sephardic and the Ashkenazi Jewish religious synagogues. And then the uh, non-religious people, in part, joined the Board of Deputies. But never, never in the history of English Jewry was there a unity because there were always synagogues and communities that didn't join. And it is hard to view the British Board of Deputies as a political body. It is not. It is a cultural body, maybe an administrative cultural body. And it 
uh, has to agree to differences of opinion within it. In uh, America, there never was a united Jewish community. There is today the uh, Federation of Jewish Communities. But that's a purely administrative uh, arrangement, financial arrangement, and it has no united policies towards anything. So you have uh, this continuous uh, development of controversy as part of culture. This is not so in many other, with many other ethnic or national groups or cultural groups, where there is a real uh, possibility of a kind of a united stand. But Jewish culture develops because of the controversies. There is always a desire amongst many Jewish groups, let us unite. But if that ever succeeded, that would be the end of Jewish culture, because Jewish culture cannot exist without a controversy. So there's a very peculiar contradiction, internal contradiction there. And that is in fact what makes Jewish culture so very specific, so very interesting. Not the biology. Jews are as mixed as everyone else. There are black Jews and white Jews and brown Jews. And if there were green and blue people in the world, there would be blue and green Jews. It's not biology. It's uh, the cultural heritage which developed over time. And uh, I think that this is really an advantage, a great advantage of Jewish civilization, that it is incapable of presenting a united front, and that is what moves it forward, backwards, sideways, moves it. Whereas the danger of uh, sort of solidification and uh, uh, sort of becoming a stone wall uh, is something that uh, other cultures and civilizations face here and there. Jews don't. But that's exactly it. They presented different positions. They still considered themselves Jewish. Spinoza never converted to Christianity. And Uriel Lacosta did not convert either. You have a uh, Jewish rebellion against orthodoxy within Judaism, which turns to the outside world. Just like modern secular Judaism, not only uh, works within Judaism to change, but turns outward and seeks allies outside of Judaism. In the 17th century in Holland, this was the situation. In the 17th century in, in, in the Netherlands, uh, there was, uh, when Spinoza was alive, the beginnings of uh, Ashkenazi immigration into Holland from Eastern Europe and from Germany. And there again, you had a split between the Sephardic and the Ashkenazi communities, they never could agree to the same synagogue, out of the question. And uh, th this is a, a very good example of this non-pluralist pluralism. Happened all the time, all the time. As I said before, in Eastern Europe, when the Hasidic, when the Hasidic sects arose, they were not only different, they were persecuted. They were driven not, not only by some kind of legal procedure, but physically they were beaten up. There were fights. So you have this all the time. And, uh, and if, you, if you look at German Jewry, for instance, in the 16th, 17th century, you also find violent opposition and a cherem on individuals who don't agree with what the majority says. Of course not. You can't. Zionism never conquered all Jews. Never. In fact, for a very long period of time, Zionism was a minority view within Judaism. All these fights are within the Jewish culture. They are uh, a... Uh, 
an example of one large ethno-national religious community within which there are violent disputes, different views, and as I said, these disputes actually drive the, the uh, culture forward because they present new things that grow and from minorities become majorities. And uh, this is a constant movement within Judaism.